some of the ways that you're going to set those limits is by not being available 24 7 so don't put yourself into that mindset you're not showing more worth for yourself you keep your home life personal no you just setting boundaries hey y'all this is me the face behind hey hr y'all let me tell you something if you really want to make sure that you have peace in your mind, at home, at work. You got to set boundaries. Let me tell y'all, I literally am still learning and just learned what boundaries are. So, I mean, I guess I kind of knew what they were, but I didn't really know how to create them for myself. I didn't even realize I needed them until I started seeing my counselor. If you guys have been around for a while, then y'all have heard me talk about my counselor nonstop. I am so pro mental health, mental awareness, because it's just brought clarity for me. You can be absolutely fine, because I know, like, for me and the black community, a lot of times we think going to see a counselor means you're crazy. No, sometimes I just need clarity. And that's what my counselor has brought me by introducing me to boundaries. So I'm gonna go through and tell you guys how to create boundaries and to make sure that you're stress-free while you're killing it at work. You're gonna have to start by setting limits. Y'all, I know for me, I suffered at this. Like I was horrible at setting limits. I didn't realize I needed to set limits and I thought that I was proving my worth by not having limits. But I'm gonna tell you, the minute I started setting limits, the more I started not only to be more present for my daughter at home, not only to think clearly through things, but I actually got more rest at night. And when I didn't set limits, I actually had stress built up that affected me in health ways. I ended up having to get a mouth guard I had TMJ, I had used to get migraines, I would wake up many times in the middle, middle of the night, couldn't get back to sleep, just mind racing with thoughts. As soon as I set boundaries, so many things changed for me. So you have to set limits in order to create those boundaries. And some of the ways that I suggest you set limits, because this is stuff I did too, is by not being available 24 seven. I get it, we have emails now, we have text messages, like everything can come to our phone. Even if you're salaried, you're not required to always be available. So don't put yourself into that mindset. You're not showing more worth for yourself. Your productivity and your actual outcome of your work, your tasks, your duties on a regular basis shows that. And I'm gonna tell you that I've experienced companies that either wanted me to do that, but I've also experienced companies that are like very enforcing of, hey, you can do it tomorrow. And I've actually gotten paid more money on the companies that said, hey, you can do it tomorrow versus the ones who are like, can you get it done tonight? No, I have a home work life balance that I need to maintain. Don't be available 24 seven. Don't feel like you need to answer every single email. Don't feel like you're required to connect with them on social media. If they're your friends, your, your friends, friends, like your real, real friends, and guess what? You're gonna automatically wanna connect with them on social media, but it's not a requirement to connect with friends on social media. I mean, sometimes you just might be venting about something and now you have to hear it in the workplace when in actuality, you were at home disconnecting and trying to relax from a day from work. And now you have to hear all about it. Don't feel pressured to connect with folks on social media. Leave your work items at work. This company didn't even think good enough to give me a laptop. I took my personal laptop in and said, hey, can you put the company network on it? That worked for me because there were so many things I wanted to get done. I would work in the morning before I even got there. Before I got to work at nine o'clock, I'm already on the computer working at six or seven in the morning. I would get to work, do some things, and then I'd come home and I'm working all over again on my personal computer. Never got paid for my personal computer. I was okay with it because I wanted to show my work, show that I'm available, be a hard worker, get the task done. Be superwoman. That's super unnatural. So I stepped away from always having that work computer at home. Yeah, now I work at home. My computer is home. I have decided that what I would do is keep my computer in my office at home. I don't take it into my bedroom. I don't take it into my kitchen. Unless I intend to literally work there during work time. If I don't intend to work outside of my back patio or at the park, or travel out somewhere, or just be in a different environment, then I keep it at work and I don't take it into my areas where I rest. If your company gives you a laptop, a computer, a phone, leave those things at work. Unless your job requires that you have this phone. So that's a different situation. But try to leave the notebooks. I used to carry a big bag and, oh, I'm gonna work on this at home and I'm gonna do this at home. Well, now I carry nothing. <laughs> I don't even use those bags anymore. My last couple of jobs, I didn't even take a bag. I literally just took my purse. Like, and then my purse had my personal planner. Like it had nothing work related. It might've had my notebooks in it that I use for me. Set limits. This one right here, I can really tell y'all I suffered with because I am that person who used to work on holidays. Everybody else is off and I'm like, oh, oh that's my time to catch up. 
or I'm gonna leap ahead. I actually had a friend of mine who said, here, have a drink. It's 4th of July. Enjoy time with us. Now I have the companies that actually want me to enjoy those holidays. They want me to enjoy that time with my family. Be present for your family. Don't do it. Set limits. Oh my gosh, I am just so excited. You guys wanted this HR Professionals Toolkit so that I can give you guys a good start on your career or to prepare your career even higher. It's going to be available on March 18th. Go to HR.com so that you don't miss out. So, you know, a lot of times we'll get to working and we feel like, I really like my boss. I really like my supervisor. My VP is really cool. Like, and you might talk about little fun, jovial things. You might even have a, an event where you go to like a conference or you have an evening dinner with your, your company. I've done it. And you have some drinks and now you're all comfortable. Well, that doesn't mean that they're your friends. And that does not mean that you have to spill your guts to them. That doesn't mean that you have to let loose of your boundaries with them. What you automatically should do is make sure that you keep your home life personal. If there are things that your family member doesn't mind you sharing, very high level things that just really is not into the weeds and the details, then don't share them. Make sure that those people earn your value and your trust as a true friend. Because I already have videos where I've told you guys that I met friends in the workplace. So I'm not trying to say it's not possible. I just want you to make sure that that person deserves boundaries being lowered and that your, your limits are set lower for them. So with your boss, make sure that you set a schedule to allow yourself time for emergency. If you know that normally, you know, your child has asthma and they may have a tax here and there, and you want to make sure that you set a schedule where they understand that if that emergency comes up, you have to go. It's just that easy. Make sure to let them know like, hey, I have this situation, this situation. There may be times that I need to leave in an emergency situation. Get them prepared so that there's not an extra headache when you're facing that emergency. If you have a great leader, then they're going to completely understand this. Make sure to let them know what your boundaries are and let them know how you want them to respect those boundaries. The way that you let them know how you want them to respect those boundaries is you just let them know your limits. You know, I actually had a leader who saw me on the phone one day and he saw me kind of smiling and googling on, on the phone. Yeah, it was somebody I was kind of talking to in that kind of way, you know what I'm saying? It was like a little, little date situation. And he goes, oh, T, who's that? I said to him, Oh, no one how can I help you what do you need help with you know they take it as like the black girl vibe no you just setting boundaries and at the end of the day it's going to keep you in a level mind because the minute you go and tell all about that and then that relationship doesn't work out then they want to know the details of it later do you want to talk about it later no that situation's over that situation's gone <laughs> you don't want to talk about that anymore so feel comfortable setting those boundaries too don't forget to ask your supervisors to let you negotiate ways that work for you. If they have certain requests, they should make all of these requests up front, let you know exactly what they are. If they're just popping up requests left and right, say, hey, I really want to talk about this. I really want us to look through some ways that this is going to work for both me and you. Because I've been getting a lot of requests that really kind of challenge my personal boundaries. And I want to make sure that I'm here, present, and happy for you guys. How can we kind of make this work for both of us? And figure out a way that these requests can either come all during maybe a monthly or a weekly meeting with your boss, or maybe through performance reviews so that you know about them ahead of time and they're not just random requests at different times when you literally emotionally, mentally can't take any more requests. So I know sometimes we get so excited with our coworkers that we're just like, oh yeah, I wanna be their friend on social media, da da da. Let them earn your respect, your trust, a certain level of trust before you just accept that request. Some people just want their numbers to go up, but some people truly want to be nosy. Some people truly want to kind of mess up your workflow. My grandmother used to always say, I ain't never know who for me or against me. I don't want everybody praying for me because I don't know who they're praying to. So sometimes people will give you a really good smile on their face, but at the end of the day, they really ain't thinking about your good. They're thinking about their own good. And so you want to make sure that that person has grown a level of trust with you prior to you just being like, yeah, connect with me on IG. Yeah, that's my handle on Twitter. Yeah, that's my handle on TikTok. Like, yeah, let's follow each other. No, 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 no. Make sure that you trust that person person and that you know that that person is going to respect your personal boundaries as well as your work-life boundaries when getting into your personal space on your social media profiles. Another thing that you can do, and I know that HR professionals are really good with this, <laughs> either they don't have a social media profile, or what they will do is to manipulate your name on social media handles. So I am Tamika Green, right? I am Hey HR. If somebody doesn't know that I have Hey HR, will they really be able to find me? Well, they probably can because my name is behind the, the scenes of Hey HR. 
what I probably would want to do is call myself something like it's a lovely day or it's Miss Mika or it's Lady T. Those are my previous old names. It's Lady T and it's Miss Mika to you. But guess what? I make sure that they can't find me. Use a different social media name. Always keep your work conversations focused on work. When you're at work, don't worry about just telling them, oh yeah, I had this amazing date last night. If they haven't grown that level of trust for you. They don't need to know that information. Keep your conversations focused on work. And remember that you have the power to allow them to know you. They need to know your work. They hired you based on your skill set, what you can do, the, the type of work you can perform for them. They didn't hire you to just know everything about about you. So they have to ask you for that permission. When you get that paycheck, you get paid for the work that you do, not for being somebody's friend at work, not for letting go of your limits, not for not creating boundaries. So remember that you have the power to allow them to get to know you. And last but not least, don't forget that what you can do is always, always make any coworker earn that level of comfort from you before you do something that you know you would normally do with your friends, but not at work. Maintain those boundaries. It's super helpful. It's super healthy. You will be so much stress-free. Like, it's unreal how much it will make a difference. Introverts are really good at this, but I feel like this entire video is directed at the extroverts like myself who really get excited and we get all into it and then we forget different things. Then we get home and we're like, why did I tell them this? Or something happens later. So what you want to do is try to bring your introvert self out at work to some degree when it comes to your personal life, creating limits, and setting boundaries. So guys, if you really want to know some tips that I have on not only just boundaries, not just making sure that you find a really good, comfortable company that you want to work for, not just getting that promotion you always wanted, not even just leading your HR department, but also just to help you know how to navigate your career, to level up to whatever levels in your career you want to go to, then definitely check out HR.com. My website is full of templates, it's full of resources, it's full of how-to guides, I even have an email list where you get weekly emails on different things like this so you can always stay in the know you can always feel comfortable having a resource to use you want to be lost like I was where I didn't have a resource to use I didn't have something to go through throughout my career it was very very difficult for me so I want you to just check out hr.com minimum sign up for the email list and just see if this can be a resource that you can use going on in your career I promise you it will be <laughs> and it is you missed out on a lot these last three tips on maintaining or keeping your boundaries at work is going to sound really ridiculous. Honestly, with each of these things, if you maintain them, then they'll keep you focused on those things versus being available for work or kind of overextending your time for work or just putting too much mental and emotional pressure into work. Those three things is going to be first, create a routine. Create a routine of what you do specific days of the week or what you do in the evenings. If it's going out with your family for dinner on Fridays, if it is watching a certain TV shows on Tuesdays, if it's doing a nighttime routine every night at whatever time, that will keep you focused from being your time available for work or work thoughts. Another thing is do not mix and mingle your personal time with available time for others. Your personal time is busy time. It's time that you're not available for others. So don't think, well, I'll just hold off on tonight's nighttime routine or I'll miss this show and watch it later. Say, oh no, no, I already have a commitment. Uh, the only other time I'm available is X, Y, Z, right? And keep it in those time frames that you're available for other people. If your evening times are times that you prefer to use that as your wind down time, to get ready for your next day at work. Say, well, I can do it tonight and have it ready for you tomorrow. No, I'm not available. Make sure that you let them know that your availability is the times that you normally would be available for those different tasks. And now y'all, this is one area where I'm telling y'all something that I suck at. I move my personal things around all the time for other people, but I'm getting better at it. And I'm really doing pretty good with my routines and my moxie life is really helping me. <laughs> my moxie life agenda is really helping me kind of maintain those those boundaries but definitely make sure that you do that too and the final tip that I want you to know is just eat well and maintain a good sleep pattern it sounds crazy but you have been exhausted all day working doing your personal things thinking moving around maybe even being physical at work at the end of the day you need to make sure that you eat well and that you get a good night's sleep because that really really will help you be able to maintain the stress you feel throughout the day at work and be able to really kind of enjoy your time the nighttime because your nighttime routine could be one that's getting you ready for sleep 
sleep. And when you eat well, it makes your body healthier. Your body reacts to getting that good nutrient better. So it pushes away stress a little bit better. Sounds crazy, but you guys are going to have to do those three things. If you've made it this far, then I appreciate you. And I really hope that you consider subscribing. If you are already subscribing, hey girl, hey. <laughs> but if this is your first time, definitely please give me a thumbs up. I can't wait to see y'all on the next video.